Benj, give me just a little bit of sort of that soft, uh, let me call you sweetheart kind of background touch there. I got to tell you one of a senior adult, all time great story. Love Iron. I don't know if you got a Laverne in your church, but this Laverne was in my church when I was in Texas, up in North Texas. And Laverne was in charge. Laverne was tough. Her man had been with Jesus for about 20 years, you know. And she was the type of business meetings that would just share her heart, you know. And she'd just hop up there and say, I'd like to make a motion and second it. <laughs> I said, Laverne, you can't do that. I think I just did it, Brother Dennis. <laughs> she had her hair pulled back and sort of a donut nut, knot, you know. And she didn't wear much makeup, didn't believe in that. And uh, she said, uh, we're going to have vacation Bible school and we need some ant killer. I make a motion. We get three bags, spread it out on our church, and move the ants over from our church to the Methodist church for a little while. <laughs> And then we can get three more bags for them to move them back over to us when they have their vacation Bible school. I thank God's in it. All in favor say aye, aye, aye. And I'm just going. <laughs> but you know, that kind of love iron. One day I was in my office there in Texas, working, you know, thinking. All of a sudden she knocks on my door and I open the door and say, Hi, Laverne, how you doing? Well, I'm here to talk to you, and I'm not in the mood for your little funny stuff. <laughs> I don't want to hear an impersonation, okay? I said, well, lighten up, Laverne. Well, it's something serious, okay? Could you be serious? One time. I went, well, Laverne, I've never seen this side of you. I, oh, sure I can. What's the matter, Laverne? Well, I want to know, do I have biblical grounds to remarry? I said, well, Laverne, if you want to get married, get married. She said, I don't care what you think. I want to know what does the Bible say. The only thing that came to me was 1 Corinthians 7. I said, well, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. She said, well, I'm not burning, but I'm sizzling. Love burn. Well, you asked and I told you. I said, who's the lucky fella? She said, well, you know Bubba. He drives the butane truck. His wife died seven years ago. And we feel like it's biblical number. Seven's complete, so it's been time. I said, how long have y'all known each other? Well, a long time. We boy did seven years. I said, well, Laverne, that just, I, you don't have to wait that long. Well, we, you preached a sermon on seven, <laughs> that it was complete in the fullness of time. I went, well, okay, yeah. Well, when do y'all want to get married? Well, are you doing anything this afternoon? <laughs> I said, Laverne. She said, well. So I said, all right, good night. I can. You want me to go call Bubba? He's out in the truck. <laughs> So I went out there and I said, I said I'll be right back. I went, I said, Bubba, I, I hear about it. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm excited. I said, one thing I need to let you know about Laverne, if you don't know, you know that she buried her husband, don't you? In the backyard right by the back porch. It's really illegal, but they didn't want to mess with Laverne. <laughs> he said, I've seen it, a big old tombstone, big tombstone. Well, that's right. And, uh, you know, every night before she goes to bed, she usually has a little coffee talks to him, says goodnight to him, you know what I mean, kisses him goodnight and everything. He said, like, I've heard it, yeah, I know she does it. But I'm peculiar too, Brother Dennis, I'm peculiar too. I went, well, okay, as long as you know that. We went inside. She's pretty astute to what goes on. She said, did you talk to him about the tombstone in my backyard? I said, yes, I did, Laverne. Well, he knows about it, and he's a nut too. <laughs> I said, well, all right. So I got my secretaries in and my maintenance folks, and we just had a little congregation there, and I gave them the wedding vows, and they kissed. That was the first time they'd ever kissed. They were of that tribe that didn't believe in that kissing until holy matrimony. <laughs> they are the last of the Mohicans, let me tell you. <laughs> it's the most precious kiss you've ever seen. And then we fellowshiped, and, 
And they, I said, where y'all going on your honeymoon? She said, we're going out in my house, gonna live in my house. Ain't no need to spend money on some hotel. We're gonna live out there. We've already made that decision. I looked at him, he went, oh. I saw him about three weeks later at the B&G Cafe, the barf and gag. <laughs> he was by himself. I, I couldn't help it, man. I couldn't help it. I went over and sat down next to him. I said, hey, bub, tell the old swan about the honeymoon. I'm your pastor. <laughs> I need to know these things. He said, well, we went on out to it. We stopped at the grocery store and got us a little swirly ice cream cake. We went on out there and we sat out on the porch and we had some coffee and swirly ice cream cake. And, uh, <laughs> then we got up, you know, to leave and was about to, you know, leave. And she looked out at his tombstone. Brother Dennis, I felt like I had to assert myself. I grabbed her, I turned her to me, and I kissed her 30 solid seconds, just right on the mouth. When I let her go, she stumbled backward. Took her breath away. She looked at me. She looked at Harley. She looked at me. She looked at Harley. She looked at me. She looked at Harley. And went, Harley. 